It is especially in the path, that path that the human being, that Allah facilitated for the human being. He made it easy for him. Ulama comment that this sabil is the, 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 the passage of the, the child coming out of the womb of the mother. Did you open that roadway for yourself? Allah Azza wa Jal opened this path for you so that you can come in this world. How pathetic you are, you couldn't even go down this path yourself. Allah made that easy for you. Then the scholars comment, in addition, this sabil, this path that Allah opened, it's talking also about this guidance. That Allah made the path to guidance so easy for you. He gave, you gave, he gave you access to the messengers, the clearest revelations, the most powerful of reminder. He put the predisposed fitrah inside of you. There are so many ingredients all around you leading you to that right direction, the guidance. So much has been facilitated for you. How amazing your disbelief. And Allah Azza wa Jal says about the human being, He took this, clot, this, this fluid and then He made taqdeer. How tall are you going to be? What color is your skin going to be? Are you going to have both eyes that work or not? What tongue are you going to, what language are you going to speak? How smart are you going to be? What part of your brain are you going to use? How long are you going to live? What are you going to eat? When are you going to eat it? What diseases are you going to have? When are you, going to, are you going to be cured of them or not? Who are your parents going to be? Who are your children going to be? What job will you have? What job will you use? What business will you run? What business will fail? All of it precisely calculated when you were this, when you were nothing. مِن نُطْفَةٍ خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَهُ he calculated his entire legacy. Put it all precise calculation. Subhanallah. This is part of our aqidah taqdeer. So Allah Azza wa Jal says to this, this kafir, Look, you've destroyed yourself. How amazing you can disbelieve. Look at where you came from. How pathetic your creation is. How I'm completely in charge of your creation and you could still be so obnoxious. So oblivious to all of this and still have the capacity to disbelieve. Look at this in contrast to Surah Al-Nazi'at. There Allah put the human being in his place too. There he said, Are you tougher in creation? Or is the sky that we constructed? So we were put in our place by comparing us to the sky. Now we're being put in our place by reminding us where we came from. From that nutfa. Subhanallah. In both of them, Allah puts the arrogance of the human being down in two different ways. Then here he says, Then Allah Azza wa says, Then, after making that path easy for him, path into the world easy, path to guidance easy, that growth of one stage to the next in his life, all that easy for him. Then after this, thumma amatahu. Then he caused him to die. You're not in control of your death either. You think you're in control of your life? You're not even in control of your death. فَأَقْبَرَهُ Then he made sure he ends up into the grave. He, put, he had him placed in the grave. فَأَقْبَرَهُ after he died. Now, qabr in Arabic is to be entered into the earth. So whether you're cremated and your ashes are, are scattered in the, you know, in the ocean, or you're, you, know, you want to feed yourself to the sharks or whatever you want to do, in the end, all creatures will decay. And where will that decay go? Into the earth. It will be entered into the earth. فَأَقْبَرَهُ Whether you have a proper grave or not, whether it's concrete or whatever, in the end you will be, part of, you will be reduced back to this earth. So you came from something pathetic, nutfa, and you will be reduced to something that you wash from your clothes, dirt. فَأَقْبَرَهُ Allah puts the human being in his place, subhanAllah. And then he says, ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ Thereafter, much after this, when, when he's even gone in his grave, then there what's going to happen? Whenever he wants, إِذَا شَاءَ Not شِئْتُمْ Not when you want, when he wants. أَنْ شَرَهُ He, and this is in the fi'l madi for, for tawkeed and for, for emphasis, or, or for actually, uh, what's the word? Conviction. Right? Or certainty actually. Certainty is the right word. Thumma idha sha'a anshara. Whenever he wants, he will raise him right back up all of a sudden. Idha here, for immediacy. Immediately he will raise him back up, no process necessary. You see, for our growth from a baby to an adult, there's a process. But in our resurrection, is there a process for us to grow back out? No, it's immediate. One shot. Thumma idha sha'a ansharahu. So the, all of this that he took time to do for you, and if you better get your act together because the time's coming, coming when you're decayed completely, he'll resurrect you back up again. His Lord commanded him, Amarahu, what he, meaning Allah, commanded him, he did not yet fulfill. Still yet, after all of these facilitations, after all of these reminders, he still hasn't gotten his act together. SubhanAllah, it's a very powerful reminder towards the end of this surah. After hearing all of this, there's still hope for you. You haven't done it yet, but there's still hope for you. Lamma yaqdima amara. So Allah Azza wa Jal, in again positive reinforcement. If this, all of this reminder isn't enough, let me give you something more that will put, put this benefit, this, this, me, this message over the top. فَالْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانِ إِلَى طَعَامِهِ Then let the human being look, look carefully and stare at his food. Stare, literally stare and look and, and observe his food carefully. Stare at the food on your plate and stare, just think about it. Just stare at it. 
Why is Allah wanting you to stare at it? To remind you that you have responsibilities. The human being did not fulfill. He did not fulfill the obligations due to him that Allah had commanded him with. Let him take a look at his own food. Now what does he mean by that? Look at, look at the things Allah is going to mention now. By the way, ta'am in Arabic as opposed to akl. Akl is any kind of food. Ta'am is food more particular for human beings. Anna sababna al asabba. So you're looking at this orange or this grape on your plate that you bought from the grocery store. Allah says he poured water down, abundant pouring. Sab is actually literally to take a bucket and pour it over somebody, right? So Allah pours buckets of rain, right? It's it, even in, in English expression, right? Allah pours heavy, heavy, heavy rain. That we pour rain, water upon water upon water. Anna sababna al asabba. It is we who send that water down. Thumma shaqaqna al arda shaqqa. Shaq in Arabic is to cut open something or to rip open something that isn't... You don't think of cutting or ripping open certain things. When you, when you cut those kinds of things open, then shaq is used. For example, in the Qur'an, Allah uses shaq for the, for the sky. You don't think of cutting open with the sky. Allah uses inshiqaq for, for rocks. Because you don't think of cutting a rock open, right? Or the earth being cut open. And so these are grand things that you don't necessarily, you think paper, cloth, right? These are, or skin, cutting open. These are the things you expect to cut open. But Allah says He cuts the earth open. He tears it open. ثُمَّ شَقَقْنَا الْأَرْضَ شَقَّ once again, look how this is tied back to the previous surah. There Allah alluded to something. In the previous surah, in Al-Nazi'at, He said, وَالْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ دَحَاهَا أَخْرَجَ مِنْهَا مَاءَهَا وَمَرْعَاهَا He alluded to it. That He smoothed the earth out for you. He, you know, and then after this, He brought out from it the pastures. Right? He brought out the water of it and the pastures of it. Now He's being more explicit. He's taking those ayat. It's like those ayat, the tafsir of them is coming here in the next surah. Right? So he says, ثُمَّ شَقَقْنَا الْأَرْضَ شَقَّ فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا حَبَّ when we, when, when we cracked it open, when you ripped it open, we sprouted in it. And we allowed the growth of حَبَّن, grain. So now previous passage was a threat to the human being. Negative reinforcement. How dare you disbelieve? You're going to be ending up in your graves. You still disbelieve. All this path has been... So it was a scolding from Allah. But then at the end, towards the end, Allah, when Allah Azza wa Jalla said, كَلَّا لَمَّا يَقْضِ مَا أمره. He didn't yet do justice. He didn't yet fulfill his responsibility. In other words, there's kind of hope. When there's mention of hope, there's positive reinforcement. So look, notice, think about your food. Pay attention to your, you know, all these things that you enjoy. That these are provisions for you and your animals. So your gratitude should lead you to Islam. Not just your reflection over the revelation. Not just on your own self. Even just your gratitude over the food you enjoy should lead you to Islam. A second line of argument has been introduced, subhanAllah. Then finally, if, even if this is not enough, now you need to know. Why should you become grateful in the end? The indar. So there's, there's different kinds of warning, but the final warning is coming now. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَ Another parallel with the previous surah. In the previous surah we read, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى and I'll tell you why Al-Kubra was used there, some of the beauties and intricacies that I didn't tell you then, I, I plan to tell you this time. You see, in that surah, Fir'aun said, Ana Rabbukum Al-A'la. He had kibr. He had kibr. How did Allah destroy him? Allah surrounded him with water. Allah gave him a tamma. Tamma is a kind of destruction, a calamity that surrounds you from all sides. But in, in retrospect, that calamity is nothing. There's another calamity that's coming that's going to surround people from all sides. It's even bigger than that. So he says, At-Tamma Al-Kubra in that context. Here, the, past, the surah began with a discussion of people that are arrogant, that take the message casually, that listen but don't listen. Basically, they listen but they don't listen. And then there's the one who really wants to listen. Right? Now Allah Azza wa Jal concludes the surah with a threat. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَةِ when that scream comes, a sakha is a loud sound or a scream that is so loud that whoever comes into contact with it, whoever's ears it falls upon, they turn deaf. They, it's a deafening kind of loud scream. So you can avoid the sounds now of warning. You can avoid the message now, but a sakha is coming and you're not going to be able to avoid that. So it's, a, it's sort of a poetic tying together of how the surah began, subhanAllah. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَةِ يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ the day on which a, a, a man, mar is used for a man, and we'll talk about the difference between mar and rajul in a sec, inshallah. The man will escape or run away from. Now, there are different words for running in Arabic. Rahaba, you know, abaqa, farra. Farra is used when you run away from something that terrifies you. Farra is used when you run away from something that terrifies you. 
So if you were go just going down the street, there's a wild dog drooling, you know, and it's it's coming at you. When you do when you run this time, this is farra. When you're jogging, this is not firar. Okay. When you're running from a, from the spears of the enemy, this is firar. Okay. Now yawma yafirul mar'u. The human being will run in terror, terrified running. From who? Min akhihi, from his own brother. He'll see his brother. He'll be terrified of his brother and run. Now, when you're terrified of someone, where do you find protection? With your brother, with your mother, with your father, with your family. In other words, you run from danger to these people. Allah is flipping their scenario and saying the day on which the human being will run away from his own brother. Run in terror from his brother. Subhanallah. Why is this? Number one, 